Hello, welcome back to Into the Breach, episode 12. And we have just uh, defeated the Vec in Disposal Site C, and now the Corporate HQ on this Detritus Disposal Island is under attack. We have no reactor cores to spend, so let's just take a look at the mission before we jump right in. Our sensors have picked up a VEC we've never encountered before. I fear it won't go down easy. Corporate HQ, VEC threat detected. B bonus objective, destroy the beetle leader. That must be the new one. I'll protect the corporate tower. There's a bunch of pools of water. There's a bunch of pools of acid. It looks reasonably straightforward. Now, there isn't any any kind of central building except the corporate HQ. So building chain is probably not going to be as useful as it might be. Uh, but we didn't really have to give anything up to power it up, so let's just keep it turned on, why not? Let's have a go. So to begin with, we have the beetle leader which moves for three. It doesn't drown in water. Charge and light every tile in the path on fire. And do three damage to whatever it hits. So that's... Well, that's interesting. So we could have... <laughs> light things on fire. So we could have fire and acid everywhere on this map. That, would, that could be quite entertaining. Um, now that charge attack. So one of the... Uh, one of the... Uh, a weapon I picked up for cheap, um, I think, at the end of the last island, and haven't actually used yet. Or maybe maybe it's one that came in a time pod. I don't remember. But I've got a weapon that I'm not using, science class, uh, I believe, that if you attack an enemy with it, it does no damage, but it turns the enemy's attack in the opposite direction. Uh, I haven't got it deployed, so I won't actually use it, but this beetle attack, if it's charged in a straight line, and, you know, turning that in the opposite direction could be a really useful thing to do. But I don't have that option, so... Uh, we have an alpha spy now, which I despise, and will do my best to kill as soon as possible, but... Probably it'll take a few turns, because I'll probably have to focus on the ones doing actual attacks. Uh, an alpha firefly and an alpha hornet. So, let's get our toys on the ground. We want to preferably pull enemies into the into the water, but if we can't do that, maybe pull them into the acid so they take double damage. Five hit points on the Firefly, uh, double damage would be great. Six hit points on the Beetle Leader, also double damage would be great. So, these ones are four. Well, you know, acid will help us kill all of them. So Rockstar can sit up the back here somewhere. I'm going up here because it's further away from the spider and I think it won't be able to web them. And in a straight line here the spider is probably less inclined or not able to web two of us at once, hopefully. Um, so I'm just being slightly defensive in that placement. Oh, so, some very good news here. Firstly, uh, this Alpha Firefly got itself, uh, sorry, Alpha Hornet got itself acided, and the Alpha Spider got itself acided. That's great. And the Alpha Spider decided to web its own ally and the corporate tower, for whatever reason, which is a perfect opportunity for lightning going through all of them and killing them all. So. There's a pretty obvious move. Now, that leaves us the Alpha Firefly and a Beta Leader to deal with. So, let's think about that for a moment. The Alpha Firefly is sitting next to the pool of water, so we could just move up here and grapple it into the water to, to sink it. That's an option. It may not be the best option, however. Another thing we could do... Um, because 
Well, the reason it might not be the best option, we need to do something about this beetle leader. We need to hurt it, maybe kill it. We need to stop it attacking these two buildings at any rate. Now, the problem is... Uh, we also, you know, we also need to stop this attack. This attack will also hit a building if we're not in the way. So, we do have three attacks to worry about. The beetle leader is problematic because... Uh, he does three damage, right? He only does three, so maybe we could tank that. Grapple Pie could tank that if she sits here, for example, after it's, let's say after we've done the lightning attack. She would take two damage from it. He would move up there through the pool of acid. Hopefully that means he would get acid inflicted as well. He'd probably set Bunch Tile on fire. So we wouldn't have a grapple free on the to use on the Firefly. And we would have neutralized uh, and we would have to move this guy here. To do that, so we'd have to go up, up to. Oh, we can't actually get far enough. We can't get far enough to drop a rock here and push the beetle leader aside. So that's no good. Um, hmm. What if instead Rockstar just moves up here and drops a rock in front of the beetle leader? leader? That would just block its attack. Uh. I've not dealt with the charging enemy before, so that's a, an option I've never actually thought about, just throwing a rock in the way. I mean, it would work on fireflies too, it's just never crossed my mind. Yes, uh, throw a rock there will absolutely neutralize the beetle leader's attack without causing any other problems. Okay, I don't, I don't mind that. That sounds like a good idea. That leaves Grapple Pie free to sink, to drown the firefly. These three were dead due to lightning. Unfortunately, we can't get the lightning on the leader as well, you know, but that means we'll have to focus fire on him a bit more next turn. And hopefully he'll run through a pool of acid on the way, you know, as he moves around, so... We'll get two new enemies spawning, so there'll be three on the field to deal with. Which is definitely better than the current four. So yeah, let's do that. Um, I'm going to have Zephyr Kill sit here because more freedom of movement. And use the electric whip to kill all three enemies at once. And importantly, the spider as well. I never like having spiders around. So Rockstar is going to come up here and obstruct the beetle. Oh no. Well, that doesn't work out as well. That's, he's actually going to push the rock as he destroys it. Yeah, it does show that he pushes, that his charge pushes an enemy. I didn't really pay attention to that. Oops. Uh, so he's going to push an enemy into the building, risking one of those buildings being destroyed. Okay, that's better than both of them, but that's definitely worse than I was thinking about. Well, we do have 33% grid defense, so perhaps there's a chance to resist the damage. But it looks like odds are we're going to lose one power on this turn. Oh dear. Oh well. Live and learn. Let's kill this Firefly. Alright. Let's see what happens on the next turn. Resisted! Hooray! Uh, our 33% came in for us this time. That's the first time I think that we've actually had a resist, and we've had 33% uh, grit defense for quite a long time. Alright, we got a Blood Scion, giving them regeneration. And we got an Alpha Crab, who's got 5 hit points and does 3 damage to 2 tiles, lots of artillery. Now, um,. So the Alpha Crab wants to charge a building and light every tile on the way on fire. Now if he wasn't an Alpha, sorry, the Beetle Leader. I don't know why I said Alpha Crab, the Beetle Leader. Now if he wasn't a leader, Rockstar could drop another rock here, push it aside and have it charge the water and drown itself. But, being a leader, that's not an option. Preferably we kill it. We can drop a rock on it, we can use lightning on it, that's two attacks. Um, and that would be sufficient to kill it. 
then... What? So, that'll be Beetle Leader dead, which is a good thing, and the objective fulfilled. Using two of our units together. Uh, we turned down our unstable cannon, we took, turned off its extra damage so that it doesn't actually do as much self damage. So it's only doing two, hitting for two just now. Uh, so I can't use the rock, I can't use Rockstar and Isabel together for on the beetle leader. Not that, it, not that would necessarily change anything. Uh, the Scion, I don't care if it lives, so we just then need to deal with the Alpha Crab. Now, it's easy to grapple. Isabel could sit up here and grapple it into this pool of acid, for example. I wouldn't actually injure it at all, and we'd get two new enemies spawning to deal with. But it would be covered in acid, so it would take double damage on the next turn. That's not bad. Alternatively, if we want to sit in acid ourselves, which would neutralize our armor and then cause us to take out double damage thereafter, not great. But that would let us grapple the crab directly into the water. Drowning it. And if we're careful, Isabel won't be in a position to take any damage. And if she is, it would be small and she has 7 hit points. So that might be an okay thing to do. Although we'd have to kill this first so she doesn't take damage from the electric whip when we, uh, when we go and use that on it. So, or she could shoot it with this cannon and do two damage with it and push it out of the way to here, which is probably, I think, what I'll do. So, you know, sit here, shoot it. It'll hurt it. It'll be on three hit points. Pretty easy to kill next turn. Isabel won't be hurt at all. We'll still have three enemies to deal with next turn. Two new ones and one wounded one. Yeah, let's let's play it safe. I don't need to. I don't, it's only the second turn out of four, so we've got two whole turns after this. So having Isabel Cannon Acid is probably not the um, best plan. So let's kill the beetle leader. That's one problem solved. Uh, unfortunately, because of these pools of acid and these pools of water, there's four tiles that we can't really usefully use. So let's uh, sit over here and shoot it. All right. Let's see what pops comes out of the ground just now. Alpha Hornet and an Ordinary Leaper. And, well, hey, uh... As I said, I was thinking about grappling the crab into acid. It's gone and inflicted acid on itself anyway. The Alpha Hornet's inflicted acid on itself. And look how nicely they're all grouped up there. The only downside... So they're all nicely grouped up for a single chain lightning attack. And I do have... Um... Building chain on. So that would actually kill all three of those at once. I undo my move first so uh, while I figure out what to do about the Alpha Crab. Now the Scion, I mean the Alpha Crab regenerated one hit point, so now it's got four, but since we're doing double damage, that's not a big deal. Isabel needs to move somewhere. Probably here, right? Let's stop an enemy spawning. We'll take one hit point, but she has plenty. And she's also then fairly central for whatever next turn. That means on the last turn we get a measly one enemy coming out of the ground and we should be able to deal with it easily. So let's kill let's kill some bugs. Oh, I didn't think that through. Oh no, I did think that through. It's covered in acid. Dropping a rock on it is fine. That's fine. Problem solved. We'll have one new enemy, we'll block one spawn. The corporate tower is going to be safe.
it is another alpha crab. Five hit points, and we have a lot of uh, options available to us. But I'm going to go for the stylish tag team it into the water. Vec has changed biomes, says Prospero. Unfortunately, it moved to a biome where it cannot live. So that's a mission success. The beetle lead is dead. The corporate tower is protected. And we uh, defeated all the, all the uh, enemies with one action to spare. That's great. A teleporter couldn't have eliminated the Vec any better. The Vec Abomination is down and our corporate hub is intact. You and the Blitzkrieg have detritus's gratitude. Region secured. Destroy the Beetle Leader and protect the corporate tower. And again, importantly, we did protect all the civilians. Now, that was luck. One of them, we did actually throw a rock into a building, but it managed to resist the damage, thankfully. Great, so, unfortunately, we did not get a perfect island and get all the bonus objective because in this mission, we, instead of defending the disposal unit, I actually destroyed it semi-intentionally uh, using the electric whip to attack, uh, I think, two, three other enemies at once. Um, and the disposal unit. And the disposal unit was what we needed in that mission to also destroy all the mountains. So, we didn't get any bonus rep there. But we do have seven rep. And no more spare cores, but we can spend seven rep now before we leave this island. Um, so what do we have available? Obviously reactor cores, obviously power grid. Now our power is full, so that's just bonus grid defense. We have aerial bombs, a brute class weapon. Fly over a target, dropping an explosive smoke bomb. Does one damage and drop smoke to cancel an attack. Okay, that's interesting. The heat converter, any class can use it. Freeze the tile in front, but light the tile behind on fire in the process. Flats, uh, only single use, unfortunately. Um, or you can power up with a second core to get a second use. I can, I can see situations where that would be um, amazingly useful. You're freezing an enemy just neutralizes them entirely. They uh, they don't even thaw out naturally, so enemies out of the way for the, uh, for the rest of the game unless it happens to take damage. And light an, uh, another enemy behind you on fire at the same time, so it, die, it takes fire damage, possibly dying in the process. Uh, this late in the game with alphas and stuff, it's probably not such a big deal, or the freeze could be, still be very useful. But uh, I can imagine if you got this early on, that could be a hilarious weapon to use. Cryo launcher, ranged glass weapon, freeze yourself and the target. Well, that's uh, well. There's no turn limits on that. It's not like once per battle, but uh, that's uh, a pretty extreme kind of thing to take. Like freezing yourself means you're stuck until you take damage. As far as I know, I haven't, I haven't actually used freezing abilities in anger yet, and. Unfortunately, you can't like try before you buy on any of these. But it seems pretty drastic to neutral, you know, immobilize an enemy at the cost of immobilizing yourself, and it takes two power to use. That's uh, there must be there must be an uh, upside that I'm not seeing to that, but I'm not seeing it. Uh, rocket artillery, ranged glass weapon, fires a pushing artillery and creates smoke behind the shooter, which will cancel an attack behind the shooter. Does two damage. Artillery. That's nice. It only takes one power, or takes uh, one core to power, or takes two extra cores for bonus damage. Um, two damage for three. Three damage for three cores. Two damage for one core. So let's just compare that to the rock accelerator. Uh, the rock has the occasionally useful but more often annoying ability that only pushes the uh, tiles to either side of it rather than all around it. And that's three cores for three damage. So 
we look at this again, it is... 3 plus 3, oh no, it only pushes, it pushes the enemy it hits, rather than the enemy's round. Interesting. So it's a different kind of push. So the rock is really useful in that it damages the enemy it hits, or the rock can be an obstruction, which can be useful, or it pushes two things on either side. I think it's probably more useful than this rocket artillery. The smoke behind, considering our ranged uh, unit is usually right at the back of the map, without anything except mountains and buildings behind it, the smoke behind is not really much of a concern. Certainly wouldn't really be a help, more perhaps a liability. So, um, confused shots. Fire projectile flips target as attack direction. I don't think I'm actually ever going to use that. So I should probably sell it. If I sell, if I sell two things, then I can buy three cores. Although, do I need them? Well, I get plus two damage on my vice fist for one. That could be great for three cores, uh, or I could get a health bonus. Um, I could get bonus damage, or I could get plus one damage on the unstable cannon without extra self damage. So that's actually very tempting. No use for cores here, but um, oh, Zappy Kill can't even take three more power. There's only two more slots there. Whereas Grapple Pie absolutely could use three cores. I don't need to get any power. I could just bump up the grip defense. Uh, but. Well, with seven cores, that would be plus 14 defense. Nine cores would be plus 18 defense. 18 would be, what, 40. 51% grip defense. That's a very good. You know, more than a 50-50 chance that a building will resist damage is a really good option. However, as far as I know, the only thing left to do after this island is the final mission. And as far as I know, there's no civilians, no civilian buildings in the final mission, so grid defense is probably irrelevant. In which case... Well, I can't actually go look at it just now, because I need to spend all my rep before leaving this island. So let's sell that. I don't think I'll, I don't think I'll be using it. Well, I, don't, I certainly won't need another pilot. We'll either, live or, we'll either win and succeed or die in the final mission, and only one of our pilots will get through. I'll probably be Prospero, because his skills are amazing. Uh, or it might be Bethany, because her skills are pretty cool as well. So Lauren is going to stay here and help dispose of detritus. And I'm, I don't think I need the targeted strike anymore. It is occasionally the best weapon for the job, but it does very little damage. It's only single use. So I think it's finally time for us to uh, send it to for disposal. So that's nine rep. I don't want to buy that. Let's get three cores. Oh, and that gave us another achievement. Um, for spending 50 rep across all games. So. Do I want to don donate this and buy one more grid defense for, to push us up to 35? Uh, before I make that decision, I wouldn't use it. I wouldn't give it to Zappy Kill. Because Zappy Kill's Vice Fist is a really useful ability in many circumstances to reposition an enemy to somewhere entirely different, often a body of water. I wouldn't. I definitely wouldn't use it in place of the cannon or the grappling hook. I don't think. Uh, the grappling hook, maybe, but, uh, um, you know, negating an enemy's attack is actually, well, well, swapping it around. Now, I got a lot of questions about how that works, which I can't actually, 
Well, I can actually answer. No, I can't. When the test mode, the enemies never attack, so I can't see how it works. So I could, in theory, use it instead of the grappling hook. But I really don't, I really don't think I want to. And I could use this in the force out, but there's the two damage that we get from uh, pushing enemies into each other or when they block spawning is just amazing. Like, the force amp is a really useful passive ability. I don't want to get rid of it. So let's just sell this and get one more defense. So 35%. Oh, 34%. Oh, because we're full. Uh, no. Oh, it's only going to play plus one, and only goes to play plus two early on. Oh well, never mind. Thirty-four percent, better than one third. Great. And let's go. All right. Uh, this is actually a mission starting right away. So before we do that, we have three reactor cores to spend, and. I'm going to put them here. Three damage, one self damage, which is currently negated by armor entirely. So Isabel is in a good position to hurt the baddies. So let's go hurt some baddies. With the Vec driven off the islands, you have a chance to wipe them out at their source. You are humanity's last hope. This is the last stand. <laughs> standard Vec Threat, it can't be that standard. Um, I've never done this mission before, this is the first time I've actually got <laughs> successfully to the final mission. Although, although I had an opportunity to last game, but I instead tackled the Ice Island and failed and, and uh, lost. We're in pretty good shape I think, We're do we deal quite a lot of damage, we have good combos, we're full on power even though I don't think that matters uh, for this mission. So let's see what we get. How bad is it? There's five turns instead of four, okay. Primary objective, survive the fight. Well, that's new. Not kill so many Vec, not protect anything, just simply survive. So we have two Alpha Scorpions which are going to probably try and web us, and an ordinary crab. So, how do I want to do this? So there's no buildings to distract the enemy, so they're always going to be attacking us, I guess. There's a volcano, active volcano, so there's going to be some uh, environmental attacks from that, which I guess we'll discover shortly. Five hit points on each of them, three on that. Yeah, this is going to be tough to kill them if, uh... What's his movement like? Uh, blocks. Yeah. Well, if we sit in the back row up here, one of us could get webbed, because he can move to any of these. Um, well, this copy can only get that far, so can't web anything in these two spaces. This one can web anything in that set, so we probably want to taunt him, tempt him into coming and webbing us. The only question is, do I want to tempt them both into coming up and webbing two of us on the front lines? Because I know this one could get someone up here and can't get someone there. So if we like sit two of our units here, chances are they'll both get webbed, which means both scorpions will be next to them. Which means both scorpions together could be hit by lightning. And then we could use a rock to push one into the other, or the cannon even, and kill them both. So double kill. I think trying to tempt them to be together is a good idea. Um, No. If I'm going to do a lightning attack, it's got to be Isabel taking damage from it. Not, not Rockstar. Now, this could backfire horribly. Because if we're webbed, we can't move. 
and let's hypothesize that the volcano erupts and throws lava in the positions we're stuck in. This could go really badly. Well, we'll have to see. We're out of power grid range. What does that mean? Deploying remote... Oh! Power pylons. They will keep you connected to the grid. Okay, so there are things for the enemies to uh, do damage to the grid. Alright, so all my, all my thinking doesn't apply. So... All these power pylons, as you can see, are obviously obstructing movement. They each have two grid, so we need to defend all these pylons. No population, no civilian in them, but we still need to defend them. Alright. So, these two are nicely positioned for a lightning attack. So, that's what's going to happen there. Now, the only other question is, how do we deal... We won't kill this one. So we'll need a second attack to kill it. Lightning and either of these two. We can drop, we can get a rock on it. Um, would be sufficient. That leaves this scorpion to deal with. And we can't grapple him into anything. Because he's not in line to be pulled into the, the lava. Well, where the lava will flow. And we can't push it into the water. We can't push it, we can't get it onto a spawn spot either. I can see how this is going to be tough. So... I guess the best bet is... Grapple Pi... Can move over here, somewhere over here. And shoot it with the cannon, dealing three damage and pushing it to the spot so its attack hits the mountain instead of the uh, pylons. Two enemies dead, one half dead, three new ones next turn. I think that's the way to go. Yeah, we'll pat ourselves on the back after the mission's done. It's not... It's a long way from being done just yet. Alright. Turn one done. Let's see what happens. Oh, that makes actual pits of lava. That's bad. Although, maybe good if we can pull enemies into it. Oh, what was happening there. That's a sign I've never seen. So, what happened? Well, our Alpha Scorpion ran over here. We got an Alpha Scarab coming up who's threatening to attack the other pylons over there. And an Alpha Digger here who is threatening to destroy these pylons. And a Scion Tyrant who we've never seen before. So he has a passive effect. All playing units take one damage at the end of every turn. Oh dear. That's not great. The good news is, he's only two hit points. These two hit points, so these two together are nice, and in fact the digger, are all nicely lined up for a chain attack. So a chain, a light, an electric whip will chain through all of this. Um, that will leave the scarab still alive, and the digger still alive, both on one hit point. Uh, so... Oh, I see, that icon is the uh, tyrant's attack there. Da one damage at the end of the turn. Now, there's no new lava flows. I was just checking the lava doesn't actually block our movement, we can go past it. We don't want to sit in it, I'm sure. Um, there are, I see, but Fireball will strike here destroying anything present. So there's these four spots, which we are not safe for us to sit, uh, but that's fine. We don't need to sit there. More importantly, I don't think we can get any enemies onto those spots. So we need to kill 
all of these without that. Three new spawns, we can block one of them, I think. I can sit here before doing the lightning attack and block a spawn at the cost of one hit point. And to me, that's a good trade off because two enemies next turn is going to be a darn sight easier to deal with than three. I just need to think about the ordering of this. So. Grapple Pie, I think, is inevitably going to take damage from the Lightning Whip. That's why she's got lots of hit points. So let's... Let's do some Lightning. Two enemies still alive that need to be neutralized. So, first things first. Rockstar can either move down here... Uh, here to drop a rock on the digger. Well, it's not bad. This staying up in this section is good for attacks. Probably better than here. Our units are then nicely separated. Uh, although it could be dangerous depending on what the volcano does. Oh no, that's no good. Uh, undo move. So that would have to happen first. And that leaves Isabel free to move somewhere here. And kill the scarab. Great, so we're gonna have two enemy spawns, one blocked, uh, fireballs where we're not gonna matter, and three more turns to go. have an Alpha Beetle and an Alpha Scorpion, which decided not to web us, but to web a thing that can't actually move. And four more spawns for next turn if we don't block any. So good news is, and this is doubly good news, if Zappy Kill moves away from this spot, Rockstar can drop a rock on here to block the spawn and push the Alpha Scorpion into the water. That's a really good move. Well, then we get these two together, we have a five hit point beetle, which I think Grapple Pie and Zappy Kill together can destroy. The only question is the order of events. I prefer Grapple, uh, Grapple Pie, Isabel, not take any extra damage. So she should fire first, which will push it there and push her there. Then Zappy Kill can come down here and use lightning on it. So let's do that. Do I sit here for the lightning? Do I sit here for the lightning? I could, at the cost of one damage, block another spawn. And we're planning to block another one with a rock, so... I think that's a good trade-off again. That'll leave us with two new enemies next turn. I just realised I could have done that turn differently. Oh no, I couldn't. No, it wouldn't have mattered. Wouldn't have mattered. Let's let's do that. Let's kill the people. And let's drop a rock here. Splash. So far, so good. Victory in two turns. Bunch of lava coming out of the volcano, but that's no not gonna matter to us. Alpha Firefly, Ordinary Hornet. And a bunch more fireballs. Firefly didn't even move. Hornet did. Okay. Hornet's only got two hit points, so we can just shoot it. That's the easiest way to deal with it. Firefly has five, so it's going to need a team effort. Oh, victory in one turn. So this is the final turn. I, missed, I was miscounting that. Must be five turns overall. Yeah. All right, um, so I think we're going to succeed on this. This seems easier so far than uh, a number of the other missions we've had to deal with, but okay. That's probably a fair bit of luck in the way the level turned out, placement of everything. 
We can drop a rock, we can do a lightning attack. And in fact, those two moves together is going to defeat all the enemies. Problem solved. Uh, what's Isabel going to do? She can shoot the volcano to show our uh, dislike for it. Um, that's it, we don't have anything else to do. Volcano's erupting. It's missing us. Oh dear. What's all this about? The island is collapsing. Well, of course it's not that easy. Send down power pylons. Keep them operational. We don't have any more. Second stage. Does that mean there's a third stage? The infestation here is beyond our capabilities to exterminate. Deploying a Renfield bomb. Defend it while it primes and it will destroy the hive. Oh. Well, that's nice. Thanks. Alright, we have to keep the Vec from the bomb. Uh, we have an Alpha Hornet. An Alpha Scorpion. An Ordinary Hornet. And I think that's a Beetle Leader again. And a bunch more spawns. We have a bomb with four hit points to defend. We have... Falling rocks on these four tiles. Sadly, no enemies sitting on the spots. Alright, how are we going to do this? The Alpha Hornet's attack is on these two tiles, so we can ignore the attack if we want. We just need to move out of the way. Ditto the actual Hornet. We can ignore both of those for this turn. Although we may not want to ignore them entirely, since there's three new spawns next turn. The Beetle Leader has six hit points and is does three damage, so it will kill two pylons at once. And we've got fewer pylons than we had last time. And uh, we can actually only afford to lose, you know, six pylons. If we lose seven pylons, we'll be dead. Now we've got a reasonable chance for uh, good defense there. Thirty-four percent. But still, I don't want to bet on letting attacks happen. Uh, this attack needs to stop stop as well. How do we do that? Lightning them both, obviously, as a first step. So that will do three damage to the Scorpion and three damage to the Beetle Leader, but that is not enough. It would then take a rock on one and a shot at the other to be sufficient. To kill them both. Alternatively, we can actually kill the Beetle Leader with a single rock uh, at the risk of destroying one power pylon. Uh, the way we do that is we move up here, drop a rock here. The Beetle Leader will stop its charge. Oh no, that's not going to happen. The rocks fall first. The rocks fall before any attacks. Dropping a rock here on the other hand will push the Beetle Leader there to kill it. That's the most efficient way to kill the Leader. Um, how am I, where can Grapple Pie move to? Not, any, nowhere in range to shoot the lizards. She can move to a place like such as here to shoot the Beetle Leader. Grapple Pie could move here, shoot the Beetle Leader, which will push Grapple Pie to here, out of the range of the rock, and push the Beetle Leader here into the range of the rock. Okay, that's good. I like that. Then, what about the scorpion? We can sit here and block an enemy spawn and lightning it. Oh! I've just noticed we have all got our hit points back. That's that's nice. That's a lot, no, a lot better than I was expecting. Uh, yeah. So we can sit here, block a spawn, because we've still got two enemies on the board and two more coming up, so blocking a spawn is going to be good. It's four turns total, including this one. Um, and use lightning. That'll do three damage to the Alpha Scorpion. And incidentally, we'll damage the Beetle Leader, but we don't care. Before we do that, we should 
use Rockstar to move up here and drop a rock on it. We don't want to do it afterwards, because if we drop a rock here while Zapikil's sitting here, Zapikil will be pushed off this spot, so we no longer block anything, and pushed over the lava. Now, Zapikil flies, so actually being over the lava is f just fine and dandy, but uh, we would, you know, would negate our attempt to block the spawn. So that means that rock should really be the first move. Okay. Second move. Alright. Oh, actually, I just realized the third move is actually going to kill the beetle leader regardless. Um... Oh, I can't get that. Oh! Oh, I... oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. How much damage does this do? Three. She doesn't have enough movement to get to this spot. I was counting on her being able to move here and shoot the beetle leader this way and the recoil from, from this weapon. Uh, pushes out. I, I think. I guess instead we just grapple. We'll grapple it onto this spot. That's fine. It won't kill it. It'll kill it when the rock falls. If we fire from here, well, the recoil will push this into the pylon and risk and risk destroying it, which we don't want to do. So let's instead just grapple it onto the dangerous spot. That's fine. So it's gonna it's gonna die when the rocks fall. Okay. Uh, Two Hornets attacks are going to be neutralized. We're going to get two new enemies and one blocked. Let's see what happens. Yay! And they're, they're competing to see who can uh, damage empty space, spaces the most. Alright. Uh, crab. And is that another Tyrant Slayer? Oh, it's an alpha crab. Uh, it's not a Scion Tyrant, so it does one damage to all of us at the end of every turn, unless we kill it. The good news is, a lightning attack is going to make it very easy to kill both of those at once, as long as we can deal with these other enemies. So what have we got? We've got... Tentacle threats. Uh, the unit here will die, and the tile will turn into lava. Oh, interesting. So firstly... The spawn that we're standing on is going to be destroyed. That's fine. Um, these tentacles, so you can see them waving out of the walls here, I guess that's some boss monster that is threatening all three of us at once. Not so good. Okay. What are we going to do? So an obvious move is to use lightning on these and kill both of them at once. Another obvious move is to come here and grapple the Alpha Crab into the lava. Well, that leaves the Alpha Hornet attacking two empty spaces. Which is actually quite alright. The question is, can we then hurt it enough to be useful? Come here and drop a rock on it, and it will be mostly dead. I don't really see anything better to do with the Hornet. Oh! Actually, no, the tentacles are here. We can drop, we can come here, move up here, drop a rock there, push the Hornet onto the tentacle spot. Kill everyone on the board on this turn. Let's do that then. And the environmental effect is blow. A tentacle, tentacular effect will uh, should kill that hornet for us. If not, it's a, the attack is still harmless, so uh, we certainly haven't done anything wrong with that. Then there'll be two new spawns because that will be lava, and so presumably that spawn point is going to be dead. All right, two more turns to go. Goodbye, hornet. We have an alpha beetle and an alpha firefly. 
And a bunch more falling rocks. Three more spawns. Okay. Now the Alpha Firefly is finally threatening the bomb, which is what we're trying to defend. The Beetle is threatening the Power Pylon. The Beetle charges forward. So I can't grapple it into anything here. And I, to be honest, I need to move from this spot. It's not safe to be here. What happens if a beetle charges at the lava? I'm thinking moving down here and using Vice Fist to throw the beetle over here. I think it will charge itself into the lava to its own death. That's my understanding. And incidentally, we'll block another spawn. Not that that's necessarily really important. Leaves us with two attacks to deal with the Firefly. Come up here and drop a rock on it. We can come up here. Neither of these spots are under threat from rock fall. We'll just come over there and shoot it. I think that's the best option for it. Let's give this a go. Yep, that tells me he's going to charge forward into the lava and burn to death. Let's shoot it. And drop a rock in it. Kaboom. One more turn after this. What happens when the Renfield bomb explodes? Does it just kill all of us too? We'll have to find out. Rockfall. Oh, the Rockfall filled in the lava. That's that's unexpected. I was not expecting that at all. Alright, what is this? Is this tentacles again? Wait, it says victory in one turn. And yet it's also showing spawns. There's... it must be lying to us somehow. Alright, tentacles all along here. We have a beetle over here threatening some pylons. We have a firefly over here threatening some pylons. We don't have any other enemies at the moment. Firefly will die very easily. The beetle might need a little more work. So... How can we move the beetle around? We could come all the way up here, drop a rock there to push it here. Then come up here and grapple it into the lava. Then come up here and lightning the firefly to death. The only downside of this move is it leaves Rockstar in the corner and with four movement should get around here. It's probably probably sufficient to, to cover most of the map for the next turn. I'm saying next turn, it says victory in one turn, but we've got spawns, so... Um, I really don't know how that's supposed to work. Actually, I can come here and drop a rock on, from here. Yeah, let's do that. No, undo. The rock only pushes sideways, so that won't push it. We could push a strain to the lava uh, if we're willing to risk some pylons, but right now I'm not willing to risk the pylons. But our objective is still to protect them. So as long as we can uh, defeat our enemies without destroying the pylons, I'd rather not try destroying them. Well, okay, Vice Fist and let the lava take it. The uh, tentacles take it. Why not? Alrighty, let's see what happens. Tentacles, another pile of lava, and the Renfield bomb is ready. I recommend you leave now, or you'll share a grave with the Vec. Farewell, Blitzkrieg, I won't forget you. This is where we part, Blitzkrieg, and wherever you end up, say hello to me for me. The Vec have been uprooted from this timeline, now the islands may thrive. Was that it? I was expecting a third stage in that battle. It's always rule of three. You can't do a rule of two. But I guess you can. Thanks to the valiant efforts of Prospero, Isabel and Bethany Jones, the Vec Hive has been destroyed, saving this timeline from ultimate doom. 
Humanity can now begin to recover from the destruction wrought by the Vec. Island civilian lives protected, 19,194. Total Earth lives saved, approximately 4.6 billion. So that's my first victory in uh, Into the Breach. And to be honest, I was really expecting that final fight to be a lot harder. And mostly because uh, Subset Games, or Justin Ma and Matthew Davis, the previous game they made was uh, FTL. And the final boss fight in FTL is really hard the first few times you come to it. It's got three stages, each one uses completely different attacks, and has different ways of damaging you. So I was expecting, you know, a lot of kind of rule breaking, new new effects, new things happening in this uh, final mission that didn't turn up. And in fact, uh, if you're watching uh, episode 9, I think it was, unfortunately the episode where I Miss, I messed up the recording uh, for the first half of the epi of the mission, so you didn't even see half the mission. But that was a really, really intensely tough mission um, that we ended up losing five buildings at once in. And there have been a couple of other tough missions, like uh, the one where I destroyed the objective, the disposal unit that we were supposed to, to protect, because. It was the only way of uh, stopping three, like three different attacks. You know, freeing up our units to, to free up attacks. Was our final mission? I guess we were lucky that we didn't like get spiders spawning and webbing us in place, uh, or even scorpions webbing us. When the mission started, I thought that all the units would be going solely attacking solely us, um, which could have been a real pain with the webbing units. But then there's all these power pylons. Which we were defending instead. Um, in fact, we didn't even not a single power pylon took a, took any attacks. So, uh, uh, well, um, I guess a, I guess a final boss fight that uh, like one of the problems I've had with FTL in the past. Uh, well, after replaying it, I don't know how many times, but uh, I'm not so keen on replaying it now because I know how the boss fight goes, and I know it's always the same thing, and I know it's always got the same set of rules. So I kind of dread going back to FTL, even though it's a great game. Whereas this final boss fight, uh, presumably, you'll get different sets of enemies, you'll get, definitely get different maps. I don't know whether you'll get other unexpected effects every time you do the final mission, which we'll have to try again and see. So, uh, first success, first try even on the final mission, that's uh, to my surprise. And... We uh, have saved the timeline. One of our pilots can continue on to the next timeline. It's taken 10 hours to get through this one. All we, and we got through four islands. So as I said before, you can actually do the final mission with, after only securing two islands. And its difficulty is supposed to scale to, uh, to your abilities or, or to your progress. I might try that on the next game. Save two islands, rush the final mission, see what happens. <coughs> so we get to select one pilot to continue the fight. Uh, there's Prospero who flies, has two HP and one, plus one move for the mech. Uh, great combination regardless of which mech he's piloting. There's Isabel, plus three great defense, plus two mech HP. Nothing to sneeze at, but nothing uh, particularly amazing. And there's Bethany Jones, special, mech starts every mission with a shield, plus one mech reactor, and plus three good defense. So the shield, it has most, well, because I had her in the artillery unit, the shield is mostly irrelevant. The artillery unit, you know, stays up the back, so it doesn't really get attacked. Um, the plus one mech reactor power is great. Having a spare, an extra power before you get any cores is always useful. It lets you power up extra move, extra health, power up weapons, special abilities, whatever it is you need to do. But I think overall the, the set of skills that Prospero have here, even though his flying needs power, I think the set of skills he's got is just a really really great combination and I want to have his abilities in the next game. 
So thanks Isabel and Bethany for uh, your efforts in this timeline, and we'll be sending Prospero back in time next time. So, before we do anything else, let's just review the achievements, if I can. Victory medals. So, of the squad Blitzkrieg, um, of the three achievements specific to the squad, we got one of them. Have the chain whip attack chain through ten tiles. We didn't get Lenny Wall, which means you have to be playing really fast. Uh, we didn't get hold of the line where you block four emerging back in a single turn. So we came close, so we probably could have done that uh, if we were aiming for it specifically, but it just didn't turn up. Look at the squads. So I'm going to review the achievements in just a second. So right now we've got seven coins, which means we can actually unlock any of the squads for the next game. I do want to stream one more game. But I'll probably make it faster and rush through two islands to get to the final mission. I want to try out another squad. Obviously, I'm going to keep playing this game quite a lot, even when I'm done streaming it. But I think for streaming, I'll probably just stream one more game, which will be probably be five, five, six new episodes, and leave, and then do the rest in my own time. Which means there'll still be plenty of stuff for any of you to see if you're playing the game yourself. I obviously will not be revealing all of these because I won't be able to afford all of these squads. I will just pick one. And we'll see if there's any enemies I haven't seen. I don't know. There could be. Who knows what else this game has to hide. Now let's just check the achievements that we managed to get done in that last game. Oh, in this, in this game. We got victory for one coin. We beat the game. Uh, the other victory ones, hard victory, which we're not we're not playing on hard just now, and I don't think I want to stream on hard for the next mission. I think a lot of the game is still challenging enough on normal. If I if I beat another game on normal with uh, you know no real difficulty, then that would indicate it's time to turn up to hard. But I think for the next game, I'm still going to go on normal. I struggled enough previous on the previous game and lost this game. I don't know whether it's just the lightning whip or the ease with, th with which we got extra power in our mech weapons, extra damage, but we had a lot less trouble with Blitzkrieg than I did with the first squad. But I'm still not sure I'm ready to go for hard with the brand new squad, who, you know, that's untested. Uh, beat, the, beat the game at least once per lane, so, you know, if we do a couple more victories, I'll get that. Squad victory, beat the game with four different squads, beat the game with all ten squads. So none of those are going to get unlocked next game. That's a game. Unlock a new mech squad. Well, we did that on the previous game. Friends in high places. Spend 50 ref across all games. We managed to do that one this time. Uh, immovable objects. Block 100 vec. Well, we've blocked 52 so far across all games. We have rescued 36,000 civilians across all games. Out of a, to out of a total of 100,000. And we've done three perfect islands. Out of a grand total of 10. So... None of these are probably going to get ticked off next game either. So those are all long-term objectives. Island challenges. Perfect island, which we've done. Defenders. Finish a corporate island without taking building damage. Again, we did that this in this game. Finish a corporate island without taking mech damage. I am guess I'm not too surprised that we haven't done that because I'm regularly choosing to take damage in either to either block an attack or to block an enemy spawn. Or even just sometimes when uh, using some of our own attacks it causes damage to ourselves or allies. So that's actually probably harder to achieve than it looks. Backup batteries earn or buy 10 grid power on a single corporate island. Okay, that seems you've got to be pretty focused to do that. Lots of missions which give you power and then spend most of your rep or all of your rep on power upgrades. Uh, I guess you'll need. I guess I'll need to uh, grind more achievements before I can get all the squads. So, good Samaritan, earn nine reputation for missions on a single corporate island. So again, you probably have to be focused on missions for double rep. I'm not sure I've seen an island where that much reputation is available, even. So, I'm not sure how good Samaritan would happen. Well, 
maybe maybe if you get luck of a draw, you'll get lots of two-star missions to do. Pilot challenges, promotion. We've got that in the previous game. Best of the best have three pilots at max level simultaneously. We got that early early on in this game. Unlocked six additional pilots, but we got th we've unlocked three new pilots. So that's going to happen eventually. I'm getting too old for this. Have an individual pilot fight the final battle three times across multiple games. Well, Prospero's done it once, so if I keep him through in the next two games and get to the final battle, then that is an achievement I could get. Distant friends encounter a familiar face. I do not know how this achievement happens. Well, guess we'll wait and see. And challenge runs. Um, none of which I've done. None of which I've tried. Finish three corporate islands without dropping below four grid power. Finish three corporate islands without powering a weapon mod. Uh, finish three and destroy every time pod discovered. Finish three without failing an objective. Finish three without equipping any new pilots or weapons. Now, all of these, again, they're called challenge runs. You pretty, you pretty much have to go in planning on doing that achievement to make that happen. Randomized squad. Open five time pods in a single game. Beat the game any length without spending any rep. Raise grid defense to 30% or more with a randomized squad. So I didn't have a randomized squad. I obviously got the grid defense raised to 30% or more, but uh, that's a random squad achievements. Obviously all these other squads, Rusting Hulk, Zenith Guard, etc. that I haven't unlocked yet have their own sets of achievements as well. Customized squad is when, I guess, when you get to pick from all the mechs that you have in all the squads that you've unlocked. Beat the game with three of the same mech. Okay, that would be interesting. Um... That could be very interesting indeed. Beat the game with three different mechs from the same class. Slightly different, but uh, probably a little more easier than uh, three identical mechs. And beat the game with three flying mechs. That's possibly the easiest of lot. I don't know. Alright. So, next episode I am going to be choosing, looking at all these different squads here, choosing one of them to unlock and playing a fast game to try and race through two islands until then thanks very much for watching and these episodes are going up on youtube tomorrow that's uh when no thursday and friday i think and um well i guess that means i might not be streaming much during the during this week because of all the episodes already queued up i don't want i don't want to have a really long backlog of uh videos on youtube if i can help it so it'll probably be towards the end of the week that i that i stream the next mission so thanks again for watching and i will see you in the next episode with a brand new squad